Texas A&M trying to save face this weekend after all those viral midnight yell videos. Hosting Miami and College Station this weekend for a game that's maybe lost some of the hype after the Aggies' recent slide. But hey, we got two guys here who are ready to put the energy right back into this matchup. It's David Lake covering the U and Brian Peroni covering Texas A&M. And guys, this game could make or break playoff hopes for both sides, but someone may want to remind these guys of that because the struggle is real when it comes to playing in the spotlight. Miami struggled in recent years, especially against SEC teams and Texas A&M. Well, we all saw what happened with App State. So, David, starting with you, why can't these guys show up in the big moments? Yeah, Miami needs to show that they can play on the big stage. And in recent years, uh, it's been a struggle in the first quarter specifically. And from that point on, it hasn't been a game. So they've played Alabama, Clemson, Florida, LSU in recent years. And in those games, Miami's been down a combined 34 to 6 at the end of the, at the end of the first quarter. So Miami needs to show that they are ready for this moment. Uh, they need to then show that that they can compete on this big stage. And that's what I'm curious to see uh, if Mario Cristobal, Miami's new head coach, can make an immediate impact in that regard. It would show a, a cultural shift within the program uh, if that does in fact happen. Of course, it'd be great for Miami to, to try and earn an upset win, but I almost think it's almost more important for Miami to just show it belongs on this stage. So uh, Texas A&M, for whatever reason, the last couple of years under Jimbo Fisher has started off a little slowly. I mean, two years ago when they finished number four, they uh, just beat Vanderbilt in the opener 12 to seven. They barely beat uh, Colorado last year, a team that really struggled. But, uh, you know, that didn't include the losses. And so coming off the Appalachian State loss, A&M really needs to turn things around. I mean, they ran 38 plays last week to, uh, to App State's 82. They just could not... Uh, get the Mountaineer offense off the field, and the defense was just exhausted. I mean, they had less than 200 yards of total offense. So, um, you know, Miami's a better team than Appalachian State. So A&M really has to to show that it can move the ball, that it can, uh, you know, outside of two big plays and a kickoff return, A&M offense didn't do anything. So that's really uh, what we're watching this week. If the defense can just give them time, can they keep the defense off the field? All right, we all know football games are won in the trenches, and for Miami coach Mario Cristobal, this is his expertise. But, Brian, it may be a little more difficult for the Aggies to control the line of scrimmage. Yeah, so offensive line play is something that A&M has, has been known for in recent years. I mean, they were the, you know, the they, they almost won the award, sorry, for the top uh, offensive line in college football two years ago. Have several guys in the NFL, but this year it's been a real struggle. Like we said, they haven't, they didn't even have 200 yards of offense last week. Uh, you did have Bryce Foster, who was a freshman All-American last year at center. He was out the first two games. He's expected back this week. That's, uh, that's going to be big. But losing Kenyon Green to the NFL as a first-round pick, uh, you know, A&M hasn't really been able to replace him. And then on defense... A defensive tackle, McKinley Jackson, who was supposed to be a starter, has missed the first two games with injuries. And then Walter Nolan, the number two recruit in the nation last year, he missed uh, the Appalachian State game with an injury. So really the middle of the line didn't have anybody in there to rotate to, to help them get off the field. So those both, uh, just the offensive line and in the middle of the defensive line, that's uh, really key if A&M hopes to you know avoid another upset. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cliche because it's true, right? The SEC is a, a line of scrimmage league. And Mario Cristobal saw that up close and personal when he was a part of Nick Saban's staff back in the day at Alabama. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, you know, Mario Cristobal gets very hands-on with coaching the offensive line during practice. That's, that's primarily where he focuses his time. Uh, and he has a group at Miami that, quite frankly, is, is pretty talented. Uh, Zion Nelson gets some first-round projections by those experts. And... Uh, all those guys across the line are third, fourth, fifth year guys. So there's experience there as well. So I'm curious what type of impact Mario Cristobal can make in that regard as, as he has preached physicality all offseason. On the defensive side, Mario Cristobal bolstered the, that unit with five transfers um, led by Akeem Mesador from West Virginia, who didn't take long for him uh, to announce himself as the best player on defense with his performance in week one of the season feels like Miami feels internally like they are legitimately three deep on the defensive line. And that type of depth is going to have to show up this week against an opponent like Texas A&M. 
All right, well, not only do the Canes have one of the stronger offensive lines in the country, they also have one of the most talented quarterbacks in Tyler Van Dyke. Two wildly different quarterback situations here because in College Station, Jimbo Fisher still isn't committed to Haynes King as the starter. Brian, who do you expect to see under center? Well, so two years in a row now, Haynes King has won uh, the starting quarterback job coming out of camp. So there's something that Jimbo Fisher really likes about him, and he's you know shown well on the practice field, but then when it comes to game time, it just hasn't, uh, you know, has not shown up. He had a, over, under 100 yards passing against Appalachian State. You know, he can run, but other than that, he's really had his struggles. So there's a good chance uh, we see Max Johnson this week. I think Haynes King probably starts, but, you know, the first sign of struggle, you probably see Max Johnson. Uh, fans saw him getting his helmet on, seemed like he was ready to go against that point to stay, but A&M just could not get the ball back to get him in there. So um, my guess is unless uh, Haynes King just comes out on fire, we probably see Max Johnson in the game. Yeah, Miami quarterback Tyler Van Dyke has a lot on his plate going into this game uh, himself. You know, he's a guy that is getting plenty of first round pick buzz. And this is an opportunity for him to validate that going into one of the most hostile environments in college football against one of the most talented defenses in the country. Um, you know, can can Van Dyke elevate the receiver room, uh, which is kind of a question mark going into this game for Miami, but an, an elite quarterback can make those guys better. Can Tyler Van Dyke do it this week against Texas A&M? Uh, that's that's going to be a significant question he's going to have to answer this week. All right, beyond the win-loss column, there's some broader implications for the futures of these programs here. David, what's a win mean for the start of the Cristobal era? Yeah, this is the type of win, uh, you know, a big statement win potential uh, early in the Mario Cristobal era as he's looking to build Miami back to national prominence. Uh, it would get the attention of, of recruits around the country, many of whom will be in the stands for this game at Texas A&M. Uh, and, and quite frankly, it would potentially signal Miami as a team that can push for at least 10 wins this season and, and potentially compete for an ACC championship down the road in a year in which the conference seems pretty open. So there's no doubt this is a huge opportunity for Mario Cristobal and his staff to get things rolling downhill early in his tenure. Yeah, David mentioned uh, the recruits that will be in attendance in College Station. This reminds me a little bit of last year when uh, Texas A&M played Alabama. They had basically a who's who of you know top prospects from not only on the Lone Star State but across the country, and uh, that's the plan again. Especially an 8 p.m. game, uh, you know, prime time in under the lights of Cal Field. This is a bye week for a lot of people. So, I mean, just looking at the wide receivers alone, there will be four different uh, five-star wide receivers on campus at the game. So. A&M really needs to show a passing game and then obviously needs to win just to get uh, get that momentum, just like they did against Alabama last year. There'll be a bunch of uh, prospects from South Florida in attendance. So them getting a win over Miami would be, you know, even bigger because, you know, A&M has started recruiting uh, Miami in the South Florida area heavily. So, uh, you know, it's sort of a head to head a win on the field against a team they go head to head on the recruiting trail against. Wow. Sounds like a huge recruiting battle in College Station this weekend. All right, Brian and David, thanks so much for your insight. And remember, you can find more coverage on this game at gigum247.com and insidetheu.com.